Hello everyone, this is Irfan Zardad Khan from Javelin Technologies bringing you tips with SolidWorks Composer. Today I will be showing you how you can work with the kinematic link option in SolidWorks Composer. <coughs> uh, those of you familiar with SolidWorks know that you can actually apply mates and use that to see the relative motion of components with respect to each other. There are no mates in SOLIDWORKS com uh, Composer, so how can we uh, constrain the relative motion of objects in reference to each other? So what we will use is a tool called the kinematic link mode. So before we can start using this kinematic link mode, we need to link components to each other. As I said, there are no mates. So the way components get linked to each other is by defining a hierarchy of parent to child relationships. So the first step to define this kinematic link would be to create that parent child relationships. So under the transform tab on the composer there is the link option and I will use link child to parent type connectivity. So I would need to click on a component I want to treat as a child and then a component I want to connect it to. I follow the same thing, click a child and then a parent, click a child, then a parent, click a child and then a parent. I have a little tiny li component over here. I will go back and link it to this part over here. Okay. Once I have defined that hierarchy, that hierarchy gets stored in my assembly tree and you can see that you get that sort of a staircase structure where each component can then move relative to the one to its parent which will move relative to its parent and so on. Oops, sorry. I did not get out of that parent link option so let's go back and make sure that my hierarchy is properly defined. Okay, and let's get out of that. Hit escape to get out of that uh, link mode and let's go back. So we are back here. Now, the way components get linked to each other are at their pivot points. So what we have to do is we have to set the pivot of the component at a location at which it gets connected to the parent entity. Uh, we will start, before we start, so if I hit the multiple gizmos option, select everything, I will see that this, the, the default location for the components for their uh, pivots are at sort of their centers, but we don't want that. We want to set it at very specific locations, so we'll use the set pivot option to set the pivot of a component. So let's start off with this part over here, and what we will do is we'll set the pivot on line or axis. What that allows me to do is pick an edge and set the pivot of that component on that edge. Okay, let's click the other component and also set its pivot on line axis and this will actually rotate about that, the axis of that circle, so that's where we will set its pivot to be and Let's go to the next component, set its pivot, and that will pivot about this space. Let's select the last pivot over here. Uh, of, that will be of this component. and we will pick this edge and set the pivot of it there. Let's select everything again with that multiple gizmos option turned on and we see that the pivots are at the right location but what we would like to do is we want to realign all the axes. We will align all the axes with the world axis so they all kind of follow the same directions. Next, what we want to do is we want to constrain the degrees of freedom of each component. So if I am to pick this component, what I will say is that this component, under its kinematic link option, 
I will choose that this will pivot about the pivot. Uh, let me turn on the degree of freedom marker so it will show me. So currently it's turned rotating about the z-axis. We don't want that. We want it to rotate about the x-axis and the arrow there indicates that that's the right direction. Let me go to the next part. Set its kinematic link option. And we'll choose its kinematic link also to be a pivot about the x-axis. So that's how that's going to rotate. That component will also be a pivot about the x-axis. And finally, this component will also be pivoting but this will pivot about the z-axis, that's fine. So we'll leave that at the default location. Now we also had this little component over here. The way this will be linked to its parent is a rigid link. So they both will behave as if they are one single component. So a rigid link uh, in case of composer means that the two parts behave as one single part. Okay, having set all those links options, let me just turn off the multiple gizmos and the degrees of freedom and let's test out our assembly. What I can do is turn on my kinematic mode and try the free drag option. So I can pick a component and try to drag it. I can try to rotate a component and you see they all rotate. I can pick on one part and I can just drag it and you can see that it will be able to drag in the way that I want. So all of them are now connected in the way I wanted them to be. You can see I can pick on this face and kind of drag it. I can in fact go and say let's say I can rotate one of the components and you can see that rotates there can pick that, rotate that, maybe rotate that to go down, and rotate that. And you see they all move together. All right. That's how you use the kinematic link option in SolidWorks Composer.